rabbi, cantor, members of the congregation, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sylvia Fodi. I am the granddaughter of Jonas Nareka and the author of a personal memoir about him called The Nazi's Granddaughter, also known as Storm in the Land of Rain. What is a Catholic, a mother, a teacher, and a journalist from Chicago doing here today? It has been a long journey to come here and speak to you. The woman I thought I was prior to beginning my research about my grandfather no longer exists. The woman I have become after having conducted my investigation is dramatically different. I started out as the granddaughter of a Lithuanian hero. I ended up as the granddaughter of a Lithuanian genocidal murderer of your families. Let me try to explain how that happened. Hatred toward Jews became a common feature of Lithuanian society in the 1930s. My grandfather was a part of that movement. He wrote Lithuania's equivalent of Hitler's Mein Kampf. During the Holocaust, my grandfather was in charge of the second largest region in Lithuania. And he was responsible for the persecution, plunder, and murder of Jews under his dominion. The government of Lithuania is engaged in Holocaust distortion by heralding my grandfather a national hero how is that possible? An intricate web of heroic actions against the communists has been written about him while totally negating his murderous and genocidal deeds against the Jews. His Jewish victims have been blithely dismissed and rationalized by Lithuania as an inconvenience in the fight against communism. What the government of Lithuania has done regarding my own grandfather is one of the greatest criminal cover-ups in all of history. As a young girl, I believed my grandfather was one of the most splendid heroes of all time. As an adolescent, I was proud to be connected to his glorious name. It was only as an adult that the unspeakable truth was revealed to me. At that point, I realized that the direction of my story about him had to change. As a practicing Catholic, I simply had to tell the truth. My greatest hope is that my book would light the flame of truth for Lithuanians to recognize their horrific role in the Shoah. Despite five years of intensive exposure and publicity, Lithuanians have not moved much closer to the truth. In fact, they have become even more obstinate and reluctant to accept culpability. The current status quo is doomed to collapse because it is entirely built on lies. Nonetheless, I continue to have hope that when the truth is finally recognized, and it will clearly take a lot more time, it will allow the crucial healing process to begin between Lithuanians and Jews. Genuine reconciliation between Lithuanians and Jews can only be based on truth. Now, in 2023, 82 years after my grandfather enabled the destruction of your families, I stand before you with humility I acknowledge the culpability of my family in the murder and destruction of yours. You are the families of his victims. My grandfather was a monster. I know that forgiving is impossible. Only the murdered may forgive, and they are not here to do so. I beg you to accept my genuine personal apology. I am sorry for what my grandfather did. And I am sorry for what the Lithuanian government continues to do. I know that I personally am not responsible for my grandfather 
or the Lithuanian government. Nonetheless, I face you as a Catholic and a Lithuanian with humiliation, ancestral guilt, remorse, and overwhelming sadness. I promise you this much. I will continue to do everything I can to make certain that the truth about my grandfather will be the only story of his life. The little girl who never met her grandfather but was raised to idolize him is now grown up and willing to tell the truth. I implore the Lithuanian government to do the same. The cover-up and rewriting of history must be brought to an end. As I look around this shul, every MTC had the possibility of being filled with one of my grandfather's murdered victims. How many scientific discoveries could those victims have made? How many musical scores could they have composed? How many grandparents did my grandfather murder? How many mothers? How many children? The barbarity and cruelty are beyond my comprehension. Unfortunately, that is my legacy and yours. I am in this together with you. What my grandfather and his Lithuanian cohorts did to his victims, took from them, took from you, is immeasurable and irreplaceable. The insult of distortion today makes it a current crime an affront to our humanity. My mission will continue to be an advocate for truth about this time period, to bring awareness and education, and through this, to help us walk toward healing. The only personal act of contrition I can imagine is to continue to speak the truth. I offer my witness and beg you to help me Tell the truth to as many as I can. Thank you for allowing me to stand before you and say, I am sorry for the sins of my grandfather. Shabbat Shalom. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just watched a very painful documentary. It's hard to watch. It's hard to learn what happened to our families and who perpetrated the crimes. But it goes well beyond what you've just seen in Jacques. I want you to put yourself in the position of our families. Think of a mother watching her baby being deliberately starved to death. Think of parents watching their daughter being raped in front of their eyes or grandparents watching their entire descendants being murdered in one moment just because we are Jews. Lithuanians didn't consider us humans. We were there for them to murder with all the creativity they could apply. And today they apply that same creativity to rewriting the Holocaust. When they can call the murderers of our families, their national heroes. We are no more human to them now than the Jews who were the victims of the Shoah were then. I'm asking you, please lend your voices to this movement. Sign the petition which goes to the government, which says, we know what you are doing and we will not tolerate it. Rate Jacques on IMDb. Tell the world we know what happened and we will not stand by and allow it to happen again. We must make the words never again have meaning. And by standing up for truth and dignity and against the dehumanization of our families, we make the term never again mean something. Thank you.